Thank you, for Professor Brad Miller from the uh, University of Sydney, who's here today to talk about the effects of high carbohydrate diets and glycemic index on blood glucose and weight control in type 2 diabetics. Um, my first question to you is how well does um, glycemic index predict uh, well, blood glucose and type 2 diabetes? All right. Yeah. Well, what we're comparing here is a low GI diet with a diet that's matched in macronutrients and matched for fiber. Mm. You will get an improvement in HbA1c mm. over and above that of your high fiber, well-balanced, low-fat diet. Mm. So it's worthwhile adopting a low GI diet. Mm. It's, it's one step better than the advice to eat a low fat, high fiber diet. Mm. So you will improve HbA1c and you will improve fasting glucose, you will reduce LDL cholesterol mm -hmm. and you'll increase HDL cholesterol. Right. Yeah, so I guess the, the take home message is there's something better than a conventional low fat, high fiber diet. Mm. And people enjoy it as well. Exactly. Very good. Um, you mentioned the benefits of uh, the low GI diet, and um, and you also mentioned in your talk glycemic load. So yes. perhaps you can define what that is. Okay. Yeah. So it's really the difference between low GI mm -hmm. and low glycemic load. Mm -hmm. Okay. The glycemic load is a measure of both quality and quantity mm -hmm. of carbohydrate. So glycemic index is a measure of just the quality. It's ranking carbohydrates in foods, gram for gram of carbohydrate. It's mm -hmm. saying something about their glycemic potency mm -hmm. on a scale from zero to 100. Right. All right? So it compares one gram of carbohydrate in this food with one gram of carbohydrate in that food. Right. What glycemic load does is say, what is the overall glycemic response to a normal serving of this food? Right. So if a normal serving contains 10 grams of carbohydrate, then that will be um, multiplied by the glycemic index. Right. Okay. Okay, to get the glycemic load. Right. All right. Fantastic. And um, you talked about obs most of the studies were observational studies. Um, no, most of the studies that I talked about were actually randomized, randomized controlled trials. Yeah. Randomized controlled trials, right. Yeah. Um, but uh, you mentioned the ob observational studies used for GI, but uh, yeah, that's what the yeah. point I made for, for glycemic index. Yeah. Um, they, were, they were randomized trials? Maybe? Yes, there's right. randomized okay. controlled trials and there's observational studies, right. okay. which, which both favor the idea that a lower GI diet is, is a right. superior to a high glycemic index diet. Right, okay. Um, what are the long-term effects of a low GI diet then? The long-term effects? Mm. Um, in studies which have followed people for as long as 20 years, you've got a lower risk of cardiovascular disease, mm -hmm. about 25% reduction. Mm -hmm. You've got a lower risk of having type 2 diabetes, about a 40% reduction. Mm -hmm. In some studies, there's a lower risk of some types of cancer, right. like breast cancer, right. but more studies are needed in that area. Right. And increasingly, there are studies which are suggesting that it improves weight control. Right. So, so in the long term, perhaps you're not gaining as much weight over time. Right. Okay. Um, and then there were a couple of questions from the floor, which, you, if you don't mind, I'll repeat again. Um, sure. They were quite good questions. Um, and one of the questions was, what is the primary food that um, in the Australian diet that has high glycemic index? Yeah. yeah. So it's yes, it's the the food that contributes most yeah, to, to increasing the glycemic index yeah. or increasing the glycemic load. Yeah. It's in, an, in, the conven in the usual Western diet of Australians, it's bread and breakfast cereals. Yeah. And some, to some extent, potatoes. Yeah. They are the biggest contributors to carbohydrate intake, mm -hmm. and they happen to have a, a high GI. Right. But there are low GI versions, right. and that's how we teach people to adopt a low GI diet, we simply say swap this bread for that bread and this breakfast cereal for this one. Mm -hmm. So we're not trying to tell them to reduce the amount of bread or reduce their breakfast cereal, just the quality of the carbohydrate. And I know you mentioned bone often. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, now, you mentioned also no, more needs to be done um, 
the more efforts in, in terms of, well, not just efforts, but uh, in terms of manufacturers for breakfast foods. Yeah, yeah I think. Because um, there's yeah. not, not a lot of breakfast no. foods now with... Yes, the, the bread industry has, has taken the GI very seriously and made lots of efforts in the development of their products mm. to reduce the GI. Mm. But the breakfast cereal manufacturers, apart from some things like muesli, mm. I can only name two processed flake products mm. that have a low GI. Mm. And those are the sorts of foods that most people don't really want to eat much of. They're not people's favourite foods. Mm. Yeah. So they're very high in bran. Mm. And um, I, th I think more work is needed here, mm. And, mm. and especially for children, because we want the children to adopt good eating habits right mm. from the beginning. Yeah. I think so too, yeah. But, uh, with a lot of efforts have been made, I think, in the soy industry, in com coming up with alternative forms and products. That's right. So I think they yeah. could do the same with, yeah. with, with but, bread or whatever, yeah. In fact, CSIRO have just released a, a new product, mm -hmm. which is um, called Barley Max, right. and they're making breakfast cereals with it. Right. And it's a really good example of not only being low GI, mm -hmm. it's also it's also got more fiber, and mm -hmm. it's also got more resistant starch. Mm -hmm. So I, I should have mentioned that actually in my talk because <laughs> it's it is a good example of what can be done. Right. Okay. Um, and also another question was about the new G GI symbol and um, the Thank success you. to dates. Yeah? <laughs> Thank you for asking about no that. Yeah. The GI symbol program has been in place for um, since 2003. Mm -hmm. And what we've done is just evolve our symbol into something that is more eye-catching. Mm -hmm. And we're actually saying that it's now certified. Mm -hmm. And the certified is really important. It says that this food meets a set of criteria, very strict nutrient criteria. Mm. And it's not just low GI, it's also low in salt, it's mm. also higher in fiber and low in saturated fat. Mm. So you're not just getting a low GI food, you're getting a healthy low GI food. Right, okay. Yeah. yeah. So I think that consumers need easy ways of picking out the best product in the supermarket. Definitely. Yeah, and this is just one way of doing it.